Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles and I have a fun tutorial for you today. This is by request. I had someone ask me to show you guys how to make um, journal tassels because I've been thinking about, and I have in the past, but adding some of these to some of my journals, right? And um, so I've made a few up to show you and I've got a couple of different ideas of how you can attach them to your journals. Um, I like removable tassels, so each of these options um, is removable, um, some a little easier than others, right? Um, okay, so this one, you can see I put some cute beads on there. Um, it's not as chunky as some of the other ones, but I think it has a nice impact. And it is hooked onto a binder clip. And I did get these that are kind of in that um, antique bronze color um, on Amazon. But the way this one would work is you would just clip it onto, whoops, not that way. You would clip it onto the spine of a journal. And the thing with this one is I like how it looks. Let me get this one out of the way. I like how it looks this way. Um, but depending on how you've sewn your signatures in and what's going on with those, it's... Um, a little fiddly, but it is super easy. I also like the idea of just putting these on, on a journal like this. So maybe it's not on the spine, but then you can mess up my paper, um, clip it on like that, something like that, um, either side. So this is one option, one idea. There are all kinds of videos out there, guys, about how to do this. The other thing is, is if you plan to use one of these plan ahead, and you don't have to bring your paper of your signature all the way up to the top of your cover, you know? If I'd sewn those signatures down just a quarter of an inch, this would clip in perfectly fine and fit right in between those. So that's one option, okay? And I'm going to show you how to make these because pretty much how you make them, um, then how you decide to attach it, it's all the same. So this one, I just hooked on here. Um, and, and this is, I said they were removable. This is removable if you actually open up the, jar, the, the hook, the ring. But um, I love these rings and how they look. And it actually just screws in on the inside of your journal. This one is a little offset. I don't plan on leaving it on. This is an idea book journal of mine. Um, and I made one in a Halloween theme. I just have a ton of Halloween ribbons and um, just thought it would be cute to um, make one in a Halloween theme to show you guys. That one's a bit chunkier and has different kinds of threads and yarns. I'm gonna set that one aside. But I am gonna show you these um, little spine thingamajigs. And then the other one that I've made, and I've made some little ones like this, but they hook on ooh, the same way, just with a bulb pin. Um, and they're, again, these are a little bit smaller, which also look cute. So let me show you this one. This one is a nice, chunky one. I've added, aren't those cute, some beads. Um, and lots of different types of um yarns and I could definitely chop this one off so it's not dangling past the length of the journal but I kind of like it let me know what you guys think do you think it would look better if it was cut off or do you like it kind of crazy I don't know but this one would easily like if you're really working in this journal all you have to do is unhook the pen and there you have it. Um, I just installed an eyelet here. Now, again, I have not sewn the signatures in yet of this journal, and I'm going to have to accommodate for that when I do, okay? So I'm going to take this one off for a second so we can look at it. But one of these small ones that's not quite as large and chunky, I think it looks really good on here as well. So let's hook this one on and show you guys. And again, it's just the bulb pin, and it does fit around that big eyelid. And you could do a smaller eyelid. It would fit there, too. So just a little bit different look, a different impact. That one's definitely shorter. You can make your ribbons all the same length, give them a haircut, whatever you want. So um, those are kind of my ideas, and we're going to make another Christmas one because I have a bunch of Christmas journals I'm making. So I'm going to set this aside. 
Um, I did like this one. I also, um, like if you have some of these types of little um, metal dangles, embellishments that I put on other things, they, they're fun kind of sewn onto a string too. So we're gonna make some. And this one's cute. This is some just, uh, it was in the ribbon section last year after Christmas and I grabbed it um, that already had some beads and little trucks and things um, attached in there. And this is a piece of ribbon that's coming apart. Oh, and I ordered and I haven't used it, but obviously it looks like I need to. Let me grab it. Um, I've used it before. I just didn't use it when I made this tassel. Um, it just came. It just came because I knew I was going to be making a bunch of these for the holidays. Um, it's Fray Check. And you can get it on Amazon. And it's just a seam sealant. So it would keep what just happened with my ribbon fraying, hopefully, from doing that. And mine... Um, was just all out so it's very liquidy this particular brand and um this one is the one that was acting up so these definitely could use a drop of this so let's see of course this is where <laughs> you gotta have superhuman strength to close this up and all you have to do is just put a drop or so on this and supposedly and I've done it before with other projects you can even put it through the washer washing machine so if it's something there we go that um, you know you need to wash at least a few times and then you may have to add some more making sure this is you know what <laughs> I said there you go because it looked like it had come out you got to cut this open so I'm just taking my scissors and cutting it open. All right. Did I go far enough? I really don't want to get this all over my fingers. You can tell. Um, you actually have to go pretty far. Whoa, now it's open. And I got it on my favorite scissors. So we're going to wipe it off. Okay, it's very clear when it's open and you can smell it. And it dries pretty quick. Okay, so you may want to go through if you have some ribbons that um, tend to fray and um, just touch them with that. Okay, all right, there we go. I'll have to go back and do that. And I definitely can see where I need to do a little bit of a haircut. There we go. Um, because even though I like it long, I don't like to have too many that are hanging down. All right, aren't those cute um, beads too? I got these on Amazon as well, and they're in my Amazon store if you're interested in some of those Christmas beads. So cute. All right, and I like this one. It's more of kind of like a fall one. All right, I'm going to set these aside and show you what we're going to do. Now, I have cut, I cut a bunch of ribbon. And I don't know that we're going to use this whole pile here. This may be enough to make more than one. I don't want it to be so chunky. It's hard to handle. But um, what I do, because I'm not quite sure which journal I'm putting this one on yet. If you know, you can decide how long you need your ribbon. But I cut my ribbons approximately 16 inches so that when they're folded in half, I get... Um, about eight inches to the length of my my dangle and then depending on what hardware you use to install it it might be um, you know a little bit longer right so we're just gonna lay the ribbons down um, I do like to kind of go through and not put like all of the rickrack together or all of a particular kind of ribbon I like to layer it um, a little bit and you can kind of play with the tassel and get um, different pieces to start showing, but um, I'm gonna put several of those because they're so fine. Um, but it's not the easiest, so it is, I think it's worth taking the time to kind of arrange your pieces just a little bit. Uh, they don't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, and again, I don't think I'm going to use all of these because even though I like them to have a lot of body, uh, 
the, I, I think this is too many, too many. I had at least two of everything I cut and I don't mind having some that are the, the same. Ooh, that's pretty. Kind of like a green and red and white Christmas stripe. Definitely want to use the pom-poms. Let's get those on here. Maybe another piece of this green. So, you know, as you're cutting yours, you know, you, you could do what I'm doing. You don't have to, like, put them all in a big mess and then take the time to sort them back through. Um, so definitely... Um, you know, I, that, that's what I normally do as I'm going. All right, let's stop there. And I just kind of eyeball how big I want the chunk to be. Um, but I think I had enough for two. Okay, now you do need something to tie it together and you can use, um, something like just embroidery floss. And of course, white would work well with this red, green, whatever. Um, I have some baker's twine. This one's a little bit thick for this purpose. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use a piece of this red and white candy cane though. Now I'm gonna do this one more like, um, I'm gonna do 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I'm gonna do like about, oh, I cut it shorter than that. Okay, we're gonna do 22 inches. I'm gonna show you why I was gonna make it shorter, but it'll, it'll be fine, everything's fine. All right, so. I am going to lay this string underneath and I'm kind of just guesstimating where I think is about halfway. And these aren't lined up perfectly. And again, this is why, again, they, they end up being a little shorter than eight inches. You can take a long time and make sure you get them lined up just right. Or you can be willing to give your ribbon a haircut, which is what I'm going to do. All right. And I think we're at about halfway. If you want to really make sure, this isn't a 16 inch, but um, we could scooch this down and go to about eight inches, which would be right about here. I don't even know if I'm on camera, so I'm gonna bring it back. I am gonna go kind of with the eyeball method which is there's six inches, about the same on either end. All right, we're gonna eyeball it. So approximately in the center. And I think it's easier to do it this way than pick it up and go ahead and fold it in half. You do wanna make sure if you're using pom-poms, you have them on either side. Okay, now this is where if you had a friend or if your husband wasn't at work and you could use their finger to help hold this down, it would be a little bit easier because you want this knot to be nice and tight but do the best you can and I'm gonna fold it over a couple of times now if you're worried about your knot and depending on the type of um, string you use you might be it will not hurt it to put a little drop of Fabrifix we're gonna use this Fabrifix glue again it's optional if you don't have any don't feel like you've got to run out and buy it but um I like to just put a little bit on the knot and I know it's not gonna untie or fray. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna grab one of these and it is a little bit longer and I am going to wrap it, keep the other one, whoa, the other end out to help me be able to tie it in a minute. And I just, um, make sure I'm gripping it nice and firmly. And then I take one end of these and come down about an inch, about an inch. And it's okay to start over like I'm doing <laughs> to make sure it's the way you want it and you kind of like how the ribbons are looking because we are going to use this string to and I haven't tied anything yet, so if I don't like how it looks, I can undo it. I'm just pulling it really tight. And this gives us this little um, kind of finished look to our tassel. There's still time for me to pull these through, make it look neat. All right, and then the other end of that string, 
it's right here. I had it out. And I'm gonna go around a few times with it too, if I can find it. So it's a little fiddly, right? But it's worth it, such a cute impact. Okay, I went around a few times with that end, and now we're gonna tie it. And again, we're gonna try to pull it as tight as we can. And see how you have those little um, strings. And you can go around as much as you want, like how, how much of that you wanna see. And I went as tight as I could, and we're doing it at least three little knots, right? At least three. All right, very cute. And again, you can put a, a dollop of Fabrifix glue right there if you want to. All right, and you could stop right there. And I can show you how I'm gonna add a little loop here, or you can add some beads if you wanna add some beads. And I'm gonna add some beads to mine, but let's real quick add the little loop. So one of the things to make this a little bit easier is um, to use one of these. It's like a bead needle and it has this great big eye here and um, really thin and I'm going to use it to bead and I'm going to use it to put my loop on. So we'll make a little loop with a piece of this. And sometimes I do a better job. I can tell already I did not do a very good job on this one. Sometimes I do a much better job of being able to loop a string through there so that we have something to tie it by and you can tuck the ends under. This one got a little crazy on me, a little wonky, but it's going to be okay. I am going to find some loops of this ribbon that we can force our little needle through. Doesn't have to be all of them, but you do want a good portion. All right. And then pull the end of your string through. And if you don't have one of these, you know, pick a pick a piece of, um, I just undid it. Pick a piece of thread, ribbon, twine, whatever, that you can put maybe on just a regular needle or something. And, um, get through here. So again, I'm just grabbing a few the ribbons. And if your loop at the top is a little bit neater, this is easier too. Um, this is the first one that I've kind of struggled with that I've made recently. So there you have it. Always on camera when these things happen. There we go. spoke too soon. Where did my needle go? Here it is. I'm going to figure out how to get it tucked through here and then I'm going to worry about putting that little piece of string on there. I really want it under some of these um, flat ribbons as I know it's going to help it stay. But everything is junked up. We may have to undo it. Let's see. I think I can, I think I can do it, y'all. I feel confident. I can see that ribbon right there. Don't know what it's getting caught on. There we go. All right. I have it under several layers. And if I hold it on here like this, I can pull one end of the string through. We're going to need this baby in a minute. There we go. Now, like I said, this one is a little cattywampus and I apologize for that, but we're just gonna tie. First, we're gonna tie a knot. And then I just do a little tiny loop, you know, just a little one. Because I'm going to either hook a little bulb pin through that or I am going to use one of those little pieces of hardware, which I'm gonna show you in a second. So again, maybe a little bit of glue. And I'm not gonna trim those off just yet. I'm gonna give that glue a little bit of time. 
All right. Now, I sometimes will go ahead and add just some floss or some other types of strings, you know, to, to bead on. Let me see what I put the beads on on this one. Yeah, I put it on this red and white stripe. I'm kind of into that right now. So we're going to just pick one of the ones that's on there that's long. And again, it is going to make your life a lot easier if you use a bead needle. So thread it on there and just kind of hold it so you don't lose everything. And I'm going to do, I think, like three beads. So let's do red and white a solid red and maybe a green and white. And then we're gonna knot it and then decide do we wanna do some more on this one string or just um, if, or if that's enough for this string. What I did on this one is I did three, I did three and three, but like on this one, I did a couple of sections of beads on one string. So again, you got options. There's my needle. Okay, so I just kind of look at it and decide where do I want the beads to be on the string. And these, the holes on these particular beads are quite large. Um, if it's a small hole, you won't need much of a knot to keep it from falling off. But with this one, we're going to knot it several times to make sure the knot's big enough. And then for a little extra protection, we can also add some glue. And it's okay if that happens because the next time I pull this through, now I have a nice big knot. Now, I'm not saying if I've really used all my strings, I might not be able to pull that knot through that hole. But as it is, even just handling it well, it's not going to go anywhere. Now, if you add a nice drop of this Fabrifix glue kind of at the hole of that bead and pull that snugly that's going to dry and this bead isn't going to move these will and if you don't want them to you could glue them together but i don't mind if they move cute so again you can just do one or you can find like i think we might be able to pull pull some beads through on one of these so let's try it i don't think it's too thick because these are pretty big holes the skinnier the hole of the bead obviously you're not going to be able to do that let's do I'm a green one and again i just got these i don't know a couple of weeks ago on amazon knowing i was going to be making this video but also be making quite a few journals for Christmas and I just liked these wooden beads that are in the red and green and white. All right, so again, I always try to kind of hold it up. Do I want the beads way up here? Do I want them towards the bottom? I think I'm gonna bring them towards the bottom. And again, same thing, we're just gonna put the knots on there. And this um, is really a thick baker's twine. So it only needed like two knots. See, it isn't going anywhere. But I am going to add that little bit of glue to it so I don't have to worry. And if you're worried about, again, fraying, you can add a drop of fray check, but you're good. All right, those, that's dry. I'm just gonna trim it off. That doesn't bother me. <laughs> All right, super duper cute. And I have a little loop to attach it with. Oh, I think that might be one of my favorite ones. I like that gingham ribbon in there. All right, so I was told you I was gonna show you real quick. This is the little pack of hardware that I got. And there's gold, silver, and then that kind of uh, gunmetal color, I guess. I'm gonna use a gold one. Now, I have like the little plier jewelry tools, but these, I was able with the other one, just with my hand, to just turn it. And I'm gonna loop it through here, just like that. All right. Now, you could um, add, 
you know, do this where it's more removable. This is definitely one of the more permanent solutions. Pulling my little loop. Um, because you will punch a hole in your journal, in the spine of your journal, and then it's just a screw. You'll put this on the inside and it will screw. I, what I did was I held it um, by the flat side and then just turned the um, tassel until it attached onto this one just like that, okay? Now, this isn't really, I said, all the ones I do are removable. I mean, it is removable because you can unscrew it and take it off, right? But um, it's not like an easy removable solution. So if that's important to you, this, this may not be your option. Some people just use some jump rings without this piece of hardware, and you get those on Amazon too, to make their... Um, tassels and then they use this to attach it and uh, you know however they're going to um I have and I haven't really thought about this I have this type of um ring that you know we could use like this and get it right through all of those layers and we could do it even before we tie it together right we could put loop this through and then you might be able to hang this from one of those chunky eyelets or put a, a pin on this and then hang it, right? So there's so many ideas and I hope that these helped you start to think about it. I think the big thing is figuring out how to get those tassels put together and then how you want to um, attach it. So there you go. This is my let's make some tassels video. I really like the idea behind the binder clip one because it's just so simple. Um, I literally threaded, I, I pushed all the threads through here, all the strings, pulled it down and then tied my string around that way. Um, but you just have to be conscious of the type of spine that you have and um, where, where in your journal you're going to attach it. But there you go. You've got some ideas and some options, and I hope you'll make some. Let me know if you decide to um, and how they turn out. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everybody. Until next time.